This episode covers sensitive topics such as abuse towards children. Please take care when you listen. You can see from the clips where he's behind the camera, like going up to people, going up to the kids on set, yeah. where they visibly cover themselves, turn away, just make themselves smaller. Like, clearly there is a way that he is that they're like, I do not want to interact with you. And like, I when I am not being paid to be on camera, I am not giving you anything. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Delulu Canoe Podcast. Woo! Today, joining us as our live studio audience, just kidding, our producer, Cosmo from the Cosmo Show. <laughs> yeah. How you doing? I am so great today. How are you? Groovy. I'm rocking this pink shirt. I love it. Yeah. Matches my background. You're yeah. so colorful today. I love it. Right? You're, 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 you have an effect on me. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's all the bright colors and the smiles. Right. <laughs> But um, Cosmo, have you ever heard of the show called uh, Nick, 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 Nickelodeon? Nickelodeon. Yes. <laughs> Where they slimed everybody. Yes, I love that show. I watched that show growing up. Oh yeah. well, today we're gonna get to the dark side of it. But before we do, I thought we needed a little bit more smiles and positivity on this episode. So I brought in our canoe today the iconic editor of this podcast named. <laughs> This computer head. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's, it's choppy. Choppy. Yay. I'm not a computer. I'm a girl. <laughs> what? Okay, my hair. How's my hair? Your hair looks great, actually. Great. Amazing. Great. Ravenous. <laughs> yeah, this is my Neotropolis helmet that I'm working on. So and let's, bump, let's bump the microphone one more time. No, nah, it's great. <laughs> But yeah, this is my... Wait, what is this for? Neo this Neotropolis? This for Neotropolis. It yeah. is an event in the desert. Um, and last year I went and I decided this year I need to put things over my whole face. So, heck yeah. Computer head. <laughs> Iconic. Do you got air conditioning in there? I do. I put some little <laughs> really? fans in there so they connect to, to this USB nice. wire that will be connected to a ba- an actual nice. battery. So, it is very light. People wow. think it's heavy when they see it, but it's it's like one pound. But wow. Yeah, I put those little computer fans in there. That is so cool. You're yes. so inventive. I will see you there at Neo. It was my first year, so. Yay! Take I'm some so pictures. excited. I can't wait. Yeah. Yeah. I've been working on all my little outfits, trying to put things together, so. Oh, so cool. Yeah. I will not be going to Neo because I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Here's the hack there it. because I know that you're not a camper. I am not a camper. Yeah. What you do is you go and you stay in the hotel 40 minutes away yes. and you get the Whirlpool tub that is directly next to your bed. And so you can just go in the tub and then get in bed and then you wake up and go. And then you can hey. go join everyone in the morning whenever oh, you wake up from your bed. <laughs> nice. You got all the hacks. I mean, you did it last year, you said. So yes. You've got yeah. Well, that was the only way that I would do it because my girlfriend, Claire, really wanted to go. And I was like, we're not – we don't ha- – I don't, I don't have the capacity to be outside for several – multiple days in a row where you have to bring everything with you and can- – we're not doing it. Sorry. <laughs> I hate camping. So this, so is, this all this sounds is great. Compromise. Yeah. I could do we did go to the NorCal, I think NorCal Ren Fair mm-hmm. um a few years ago now. But and we stayed in an R V overnight. Mm-hmm. So that was one night. We in an R V. I can do that. Yeah. That's fine. R V is nice. It hey. works. Yeah, yeah, it's it's for for one night. It's totally yeah. You have a little refrigerator in there. You have your you still have a bed. Mm-hmm. You're technically like you are inside of a thing. You have a shower, um, but you're still but you're still like having the little camping experience. a little moment. Yeah, yeah. A little yeah. Camping moment. Um, but yeah, no, we're having a not camping moment. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> we go to Neil because we have too much. There's too much shit. Like I'm really, we're really <laughs> about the costumes and like dressing up and like having really complicated. I don't know how people bring all their stuff and do all their makeup outside. I just, Mm-mm. I don't have the capacity. My, I don't my partner what does do it do? all in a, in a tent. Oh, oh, so you were actually going camping at this event? Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna we gotta. You're tent and all real. that stuff so yeah, yeah. we do it like for but wasteland she's done wasteland she's a wastelander yeah. so um yeah she has like a whole makeup thing set up with a vanity thing wow it's just like she does it right there inside the tent and ready to go rock and roll she's she's a pro 
Wow. She's a pro. Yeah. She's I, a pro. I will definitely not be doing any of the camping. <laughs> I'm going to sit right here in my comfy big yellow chair and be like, yes. all right, you guys have fun. Yes. But then I always feel like secondhand, like, oh, FOMO, because everybody's having so much fun and they look so good. So maybe, maybe I'll try it next year or the year after that or the year after that. <laughs> They don't, yeah, well, yeah, they don't tell you about the cold or the dirt and the sand and everything. So, oh, yeah. It's yeah. glamorous on Instagram yeah, from my, exactly. you know. <laughs> yeah. I love that. But also, so Chompy, you're not only an editor and you're obviously going out and doing all these like fun and wonderful events, but you yourself have a podcast or you had one, right? I do. It's called Extremely Online. It's coming back. Oh, yay! Uh, it's a podcast about the internet. Oh. Um, I have Taylor Lorenz on an episode that I need to edit. Um, yeah, no, so I'm an editor who edits for other people and I love doing that. When it's my own thing, I will put it off forever because I just hate <laughs> looking at myself. This one, we have a, a nice little time, little deadline. So yeah. it's great. Yeah, this will work out. But just yeah, close your eyes while you edit. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I have a new, new, new podcast about mm. horror movies that will be coming in the summer. So oh, wow. Yeah. So you're going to juggle I, multi-podcasts. Yeah, it's going to be a whole... A whole podcast world. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited <laughs> for you. Yeah. Well, be sure to check them out. We'll link down in the description. Or you'll probably help me link it. You'll be able to find it faster yes. than me. <laughs> but um, obviously on this podcast, as you know, we have Delulu's. And I thought you brought up a very, I don't want to say like hot topic kind of topic. I guess more of just like something that's really relevant, which is why we want to get this one out sooner than later. But you saw the Quiet on Set documentary. Yes. And you were like really passionate about it. Well, yeah, I think that there's been opinions just – so I didn't watch it right away when it came mm-hmm. out. It came out um, early in March, I believe. Yeah. Um, I watched it, I think, last week or the week before that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had been drawn to watch it because I, literally all over my TikTok, all over my Instagram are – people posting clips from it or posting clips from different shows. So it has been everywhere, just like the Ariana Grande clips, especially. Yeah. Um, And you're like, oh, didn't know. Well, some of it I didn't. So so I had heard stuff about Dan Schneider. I've heard about him for Mm -hmm. years. Um, And I was actually working in a prop house last year um, that um, serviced Nickelodeon shows. So there was like – just chatter everywhere about it. Um, but yeah, I just felt like the documentary, it covered a lot, but it also left a lot out. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously there's a lot of speculation about like Amanda Bynes and like mm-hmm. if the account that was posting. The Twitter. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. that was like posting about like things that supposedly happened to her. Yeah. And, yeah um, allegedly, just to keep everybody on the loop, allegedly there was an Amanda Bynes Twitter that was like what? like years ago where she showed a photo of her ID and then tweeted out a bunch of things about Dan Schneider. Um, allegedly it was never confirmed if it was her or not, but the fact that they tweeted out a photo of her ID was pretty damning evidence that it was her. And she was basically saying a bunch of allegations about like Dan being her abuser, but she didn't come forward for the documentary. Well, she, I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of her, I don't know how recent her posts are, but there's mm-hmm. been, I've, I've seen reposts of her TikToks about, like, I think she was going to, to nail school. Yeah. She does not seem well. Yeah. She seems like you couldn't ask her about it. <laughs> yeah. She has, what is it, like, extremely blonde hair. She's got, like, a heart tattoo under her eye. And when she talks and makes content lately, because I, too, have seen the nail tech video, She doesn't seem like she was a very bubbly and happy looking child on these like Nickelodeon shows. She was very comedic. Um, And now to see her, what, in her mid 30s, but there's no light, there's no smile, there's no nothing left. And it makes you wonder what really happened. It just like seems like like lobotomized. Like it's scary. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't want to like make any speculations about like what happened or what she she did anything. I have no idea. She just. We don't know her. Does just, not yeah. seem, just is clearly not the same right uh, person who you saw yeah as a kid. Mm-hmm. I don't know who Amanda Bynes is. You don't know. You never watched the Amanda show. No, I stopped like right after Clarissa explains it all. Okay, okay. I feel like time. yeah, the Amanda show and Drake and Josh was like very much my time. After that, mm-hmm. like the more Dan Schneider shows, like iCarly and Victorious and all that, that was past when I was watching. Was more, yeah, yeah. I watched those shows. Um, but I loved the Amanda show and I remember my parents multiple times being like, 
you shouldn't be watching this. And at the time, oh. you you oh. have no idea. You have no idea. But now, now when you watch the documentary, it's like, oh, her character was named Penelope Taint. Yeah, and yeah. Like, Come Whoa. on. <laughs> yeah. And she, I and I loved that character. I thought it was so funny. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that I like repeated her name at some point and. But why did he wrote off in one of Dan Schneider's explanations or like one of the writers had came forward and said that it was supposed to be short for like temper tantrum. So that's where they got that word from. So they were trying to write off a lot of the inappropriate (laughs) language and shots of the kids like having things happen to them. There was a scene where she was talking to the audience about like giving them all popcorn or something. And the guy was like, Oh, if you buy 300 things of popcorn, no, it was pretzels. If you buy 300 pretzels, you get a baby with it. And just like weird things that now as an adult totally make sense because they were insinuating hidden messages. Right, yeah, and yeah, alluding to potentially that that yeah, that she was pregnant. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it's like if that was real and that happened, like that would allegedly. Well, yeah, 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 allegedly. Yeah. And well, and but and he there are clips in the uh documentary of him of Dan Schneider being like, I'm I'm the writer. I can make you do anything I want. I can put you yeah. in a horrible situation. It's like, hey man, <laughs> yeah. Do you really think you should say that about there's, kids that you're working with? There's an entire sketch where it's Amanda in a hot tub with other adults, and like she's in a swimsuit, mind you. But like, why is a kid on TV in a swimsuit? And then interviewing people in a hot tub. And yeah, interviewing and him. Dan in, was in one of them. Fully clothed yeah. in the hot tub. And it's like, as just, adults can look at that situation and know what it looks like. Yeah. Creepy. Yeah, yeah. So basically, Quiet On Set is a documentary that came out this year. In fact, at this time, it came out a month ago. And it's not only one person's perspective of what happened at Nickelodeon when it was Nick on Sunset, but it's multiple people some people that wanted to come forward and have a name and a face and lots of people that did not want to come forward and have a name and a face but there were two female writers there was a director who came forward um and and so many others that shared their time working with dan schneider personally whether it be in the writer's room or on set and a lot of the kids stars well not a lot but i would say like three or four came forward and talked about their experiences on dan schneider's show and for somebody, for us both, we watched these these shows, these skits, these parodies, and you don't think anything of it because when we were kids, I, like, I wanted to be on TV. I wanted to, you know, be an actor. And it's insane now that this documentary comes forward and highlights how dangerous these the set allegedly was and now is coming forward that it is very dangerous, not only for kids, but for women in the industry. I keep thinking about, yeah, like the ethics of having child actors because obviously there are great movies with great child actors and like when you have a kid who is that good of an actor that young like you would want to and probably they want to to an extent keep doing it um but yeah i i i grapple with where where is that line and like yeah, yeah um there are obviously people who are happy to abuse that line and Oh, it's capitalism again. Ah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. Like when you have a kid who can, it was like, oh, if we just do this one thing, and I, we get mm-hmm. X, Y, and Z, and yeah, just pushing, 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 because. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think Allison Stoner. If anybody has seen her podcast, I I didn't have time to watch the entire thing, but I saw a clip where she talks about how a child, because she's also a child actress, but she was on the Disney side of things, that she was auditioning for like very serious shows where the kids would be reenacting like parents having situations and the kid being in the middle of it or like police interrogations. And as a child, you don't know what's really real. And you're you're asking these children in these movies, TV television shows, whatever, you're asking them to act like they're in them. And as they grow up, Allison Stoner comes forward and says that she feels like she lived through those experiences that were just scripted, but now she has the memory of watching hypothetical mom and dad fight in front of her. There was one where she had to audition for a show where she was underneath a chair in fear of somebody coming in and like taking her out of the room, like yanking her out. And she remembers leaving that audition shook up because she was scared somebody was going to come and actually take her. 
So it, it's very interesting hearing the celebrities and, and child stars that do want to come forward now because it's their experience and like what they're now taking with them into therapy and into their walks of life. And like Jeanette McCurdy wrote a book and it's fascinating to see. Well, not fascinating. It's, it's sad. It's awful to see what they went through and how it affects them now as an adult and throughout the rest of their lives. Well, yeah, it clearly, yeah. Uh, the, the drama bomb of the series was that Drake Bell yeah. was the anonymous. Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about, Sure. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> if you haven't seen a uh, quiet on set, uh, there was a court case, a very famous court case back in the day that was really swept under the rug where, um, what was his name? There was an abuser on the set. So on, on Nickelodeon's shows, Peck. yes, Brian Peck, there were three big, I'm going to use the P word. There were three big files on the set. One was an editor who was famously caught on how to catch a predator um, who would edit all the Nickelodeon shows. There was Brian Peck, who was an acting coach, like a, a dialect coach per se, and he worked one-on-one -on -one with a lot of the kids. And then there was a, another one, which I don't know this man's name, but he was basically like a, a talent assistant where he would walk the children like from their parents. Okay, I'm taking them to the makeup chair and he would escort the children on set and the big court case was focusing on brian peck and his um relationship with drake bell um this court case was swept under the rug it was very um very minimal repercussions for him i think he did 16 months in jail not even like it was a very short amount of time and no one knew who the child star was who was the young boy and even the director in or a director um, in the documentary said like, oh, it was just a boy on set. Like he was an extra. And then the person running the camera was like, no, no, he was the star of a show. This child was a big star on the show. And the director was like, what do you, what do you mean? Really? He was, they were shocked. People didn't know that it was Drake Bell. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's a miracle that that never came out and it didn't affect his career because all these celebrities came forward. I think there were 42 or somewhere in the forties of iconic celebrities writing and supporting that this predator was tempted by a young star, which when you're like, what he was 15. Yeah. How could a 15 it's... year old seduce a grown man? I'm sorry, but that is just wrong on so many levels. It's so disappointing. Who knows what Brian Peck <sighs> was telling those people about, but it, but it is like, yeah, they signed things that were like, yeah, this child came. Like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Child was seducing <laughs> him or what was it? There was an iconic word that they used for it. Oh, I can't I can't think of it, but it's just the audacity of grown adults to assume that the child wanted this when he obviously was up there and clearly was affected by this. And it it's sad, but also it's very interesting to see how Drake Bell not only was the victim of this abuse, but I've seen a couple of YouTube videos. Uh, Scandi is the one that I've been watching the most because she does very investigative deep dives. She talks about how that him being the victim and then all of a sudden becoming the predator. So not only one 15 year old, I'm talking about Drake Bell here. He went on to do the same thing to a 15 year old, but also two of his exes came forward and said that he was verbally, physically abusive. Oh, yeah. 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 I literally, yeah. I just found out though that part today. So I, I saw about the court case where he pled guilty. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't know any of that when I was watching the documentary. So when, when I was watching the documentary, it is very emotional yeah. watching him talk about this, talking about the relationship with his parents. You also see Drake Bell's dad. Yeah. Uh, I feel so bad for his dad because B Drake Bell fa basically fired his dad as a child. And, like, that's what abusers do is they separate you from – the people that you love and the people that care about you and the people who actually have your best interest, they get you away from people like Drake Bell's dad. So mm -hmm. it was very emotional watching them because he didn't know for years either. His dad didn't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, seeing that now, like, he's turned around and kind of done similar things, abusing young girls and, like, abusing his parents, like... This is why you need to get help. It is yeah. your responsibility, unfortunately. When stuff happens to you, you need to talk to somebody about it because mm. 
if you don't, it will fester and you will take that out on other people. And yeah, it's so sad to see that cycle of, of abuse happen mm-hmm. because, yeah, it is horrific and tragic what happened to him. And it is also horrific and tragic what has happened to the people that, yeah, he is now affected. So. Yeah. It's very interesting because I'm curious, have you ever had, if you would like to share, have you ever had an experience where somebody was grooming you potentially or anything? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get into it on this okay, podcast, yeah, totally, but yeah, totally. yeah, no, there's like, I knew someone from, from watching their YouTube videos and I yeah. met them and that turned into a completely different experience than mm-hmm. what I thought it would be based on oh, man. how I knew them in my head. Um, and yeah, other things that they said. So yeah, yeah. no, I definitely, I like whenever victims come out, like I really like that really resonates with me. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, it's just a very, yeah, it's a very sad cycle to witness because yeah, I feel a lot of empathy for, Mm -hmm. and and sympathy for everyone involved basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's interesting that like you've even witnessed that yourself, but it's also great to be like see getting help and and properly dealing with it can really stop the cycle of abuse um i personally had an incident where it wasn't anybody famous it was actually a youth pastor who was writing me love notes even though i was dating his son when i was like 15 14 i've actually never talked about this so bear with me um and i had i had no idea as a child that this man was grooming me i just thought like he was my friend cuz he would write that like we were good friends but then he would write i love you at the bottom of these notes and all kinds of crazy predatory things and as a child you don't you don't know and he had power he was like the youth pastor at my church like that i went to and i remember my mom seeing one of the notes and being shocked and I wish she would have stepped in and and did something, but also my mom is not a religious person. So she just was like, you shouldn't go to this church anymore. And as soon as you tell a teenager not to do something, of course they're going to do it. So I I still kept on going. Luckily, nothing ever happened. Um, And it, it, it ended at some point because of other reasons, but I don't go out of my way to talk to 15 year olds. You know, it's, it's recognizing that oh, I was being groomed in this situation. And now obviously I have a therapist that I see weekly to like talk to about those kinds of things. And and I hope Drake is doing the same. Um, obviously I don't, he did not deserve what happened to him, but also he should take accountability, which I am happy that he pled guilty in that court case because pleading guilty and recognizing that this is a problem is ultimately the first step. So, right. I did see that he apparently was going into like Instagram comments when people were talking about his exes Mm. and and him being like, none of that was proven. Like there was no court case. So it's like, don't say anything. Stop talking. Just go get help. Yeah. No, truly. There are two other documentaries I want to recommend if you like this one Mm -hmm. Um, and you're interested in, yeah, like the cycle of abuse and like how these things happen. Um, Abducted in plain sight. Have you seen that? I have not. Uh -uh. So that's about um, a man who's a neighbor with family, Mm -hmm. uh, a 12 or like 14 year old girl. And he basically convinces her family that he is in love with her. They're in love and they're going to get married. And he like convinces her family that it's okay for him to like take her away. And he like, he abuses the mom and dad separately, like turns them against each other, like does stuff to them that they're embarrassed to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy so watch that one um and the keepers have you seen that one i've heard of that one okay that one's about i believe it's baltimore nuns um and basically yeah a priest was abusing these little girls and this nun found out about it and was going to come forward and then she's killed and then the priest, like, shows the little girls her, her body. And they're like, if you ever say anything, here's what's going to happen to you. Oh it's crazy. Gosh. Yeah. No. So watch, it's always watch that one, too. Oh, so yeah. No, that's a whole yeah. other yeah. whole other can of worms. Yeah. Um, oh, definitely watch those. Yeah. I w- am very interested, especially after seeing this one. Um, I also want to add, outside of the documentary, there was a Dan Schneider responded I I couldn't bear to watch it. I didn't watch it either, <laughs> but I watched other people's because I don't want to give him the view. 
I'm not. I'm I not gonna like yeah, make money off that. I don't want to give him the time of day. I'm like a 15 minute apology. I've seen enough apology videos. I know what you're gonna say. Oh. It was a 19 minute oh. interview with T Bone, who is who? an adult actor that was on the show iCarly. So he had he had somebody interview him, and it wasn't even like a child that was on the set. It wasn't like an official reporter. It was an adult that happened to be on one of the shows, and um. He basically said, like, a blanket, generalized, like, I'm so sorry that you felt that way kind of Uh. thing. And he claims um, that he wanted to pick up the phone and apologize to people. But he had his lawyer pick up the phone and offer people hush money. (laughs) So... Make that make any so sense. So what you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? Is this a <laughs> what do you mean by that? I also wanted to read this quote because I thought it was very fascinating. Um, da, 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 da. He is sorry that at the time he was new and experienced to filmmaking and used it as an excuse for sexual harassment and child predatory behavior. He also says that they now going forward should have therapists on set to make sure the kids really want to be on TV and understand what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. He thinks the reason that the children are having these psychological issues as adults is because they became famous on TV, not because of the treatment that he put them through. You can see from the clips where he's behind the camera, like going up to people, going up to the kids on set, yeah. where they visibly cover themselves, turn away, just make themselves smaller, like clearly there is a way that he is that they're like i do not want to interact with you and like i when i am not being paid to be on camera i'm not giving you anything stop <laughs> yeah he he's something else and i i'm even shocked that he issued a blanket or what some are calling just like a fake apology it's like dude you you were better off being quiet but i've heard it's because he's writing another movie He's got to, yeah, that's the unfortunate thing is that he's still out there and he's trying again and it's so sad that he's probably going to get away with it, like, for the time being, like, until, unless some other bombshell drops, like, unfortunately, he's mostly going to get away with it and that is this, like, very sad reality of, yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask you both, because obviously there were a lot of kids and people on these shows, and Jeanette McCurdy, who is a star on iCarly and Victorious, not Victorious, um, iCarly and Sam and Cat, that's what it was, she came forward in her book and said that Nickelodeon had offered her $300,000 as hush money. Now, this is not alleged. She legit was like, I did not take the $300,000 to be quiet so that she could talk about it. And I want to know if you think that these other child stars did take the hush money. Because a lot of them aren't coming forward. That's very possible because there's, yeah, a handful of people that I'm like, it's weird that they're showing your picture and you're not in this and, like, your co-stars are in this. So um, that is a strong, strong possibility. And who knows what was offered to them and it could have yeah. been a life-changing amount of money and like i don't know how well any of them are doing like right maybe that maybe they made the right choice for them at that time yeah. so it is unfortunate that yeah so i'm i'm curious though in both of your opinions if someone offers you hush money even with NDAs, because NDAs technically can't hide illegal activity, right? And what Dan was doing, like the mistreatment of the writers on the set, of course, is illegal. But him taking photos with kids on set and like asking them for massages isn't really illegal. Do you think hush money, like they would just have to give it back in order to speak up? Or like, what? what's your thoughts on the hush money? Isn't there, I know for um, for the Me Too movement, there mm-hmm. is a fund for people who were given, essentially, like, given to... Give hush money? Yeah. And so if, I'm not sure what it, what they signed, what it, say, what it might say that they have to give it back, or, like, what happens if you break this contract mm-hmm. or whatever. Um, but I know that there is a fund for people who are Me Too survivors um, oh, who can okay. basically, like, yeah, have their lawyers paid for by this fund like if that happens to you if you decide like oh actually no i want to come forward i i can't think of anyone off the top of my head who has done that yeah um Hmm. but i do know that that's available i don't know what do you think cosmo (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, hush money. We're just laughing because it's uncomfortable. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those people that uh, haven't come forward, yeah, mm-hmm. they definitely got hush money. I mean, it depends on their situations. If they're an actor and they not getting crap and they can use it. Right. So what I've noticed with some actors is once they hit like four of like a like a good year, you know, they're on top of it. Mm-hmm. And that I can see how that gets to the mind where you're like, I'm making all this money now. And you start getting all these things that require that same amount of money every freaking year. Right. And then when you, the next year when everything's slow and all that kind of crap, you're like, oh, you're hurting. So now you have all this makeup artists, designers, mm. this, your entourage behind you, several different agents and you know, yada, yada, yada. So I could see where some people would take it. Yeah. I, on one hand, if I was in that situation, wouldn't. Because mm-hmm. I'm just like, if nothing is worth it. I used to say 50 bucks is 50 bucks, but that's like a, that's a sunset. <laughs> that's different, that's though. That's a sunset boulevard old school <laughs> talk back in the early you know, of the Hollywood days. Um, But something like that, serious? Mm-hmm. Uh, no, no, I'm not. I wouldn't keep quiet. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, I'd probably be the first one to say something and encourage other people to speak up. Yeah. And then make them feel really bad for not speaking up. Because, <laughs> like, a big one that people are questioning is Ariana Grande. Mm. Because she got her start from Victorious and Sam and Cat, And there are some scenes of her that are, like, mimic shot for shot from corn. Uh-huh. Like, like her laying on a bed, like, doing a vlog where she's, like, pouring the water. water on herself. She's squeezing a potato oh my saying, God. give me the juice. Uh-huh. Insinuating eggplants. Um, <laughs> but she... She hasn't said anything, and it kind of makes me wonder. Obviously, this is just speculation. This is just my thoughts. But it makes me wonder if she's, like, ashamed, and maybe she was one of the victims directly correlated with Dan, where maybe there was something going on behind closed doors with her and him, Mm -hmm. and that's why she's not speaking up. It's got to be bigger than anything that we know about. That's, yeah. Just sad. Especially if you have, like, a following that people look up to you. Yeah. Yeah, it's Yeah, it would be such a bombshell. It's, like... There's so much on the table, so yeah, yeah. I would. just can't imagine what being in that situation would be like. But then, why do you both think this? Again, this is all alleged. Yeah. Like this is not facts right now. Why do you think Amanda Bynes won't speak out? I think she's not well. I don't know if she would, based on what I've seen from her, like where she's talking about, like going to no, like I don't know if she would be in. It seems like her mind has been erased. Like okay, whether it be like if she got like electrotherapy or like oh you okay i, I don't i don't wow. know like i honestly don't you think none. they met and blacked her with the or, whole, I think like, don't something or the, or like meth or something like it seems like something erased her brain one way or the other she and probably I, got britney speared or oh, no, yeah, yeah britney spears is another one who i'm like i love you so much when i see your post i'm so concerned about what, like, how did that what happen? happened like I know, I've heard, I heard the story. I watched the documentary, the free mm-hmm. Britney stuff like that. And I'm just like, I'm looking at her videos now. I'm like, someone needs to take care of you, you or trapped, something. Yeah. But how are you going to this like Charlie Sheen, Tiger King blood thing with Jigger? You know? Yeah. This psycho, I don't know, psychosomatic situation. I mean, when you're that famous at that young of an age, I think it really psychologically does something to you. It and definitely does. There's been some studies that say, like, the age that you become, like, pop star, like, the huge famous, kind of like JoJo Siwa is another good example, where you you become internationally known. There's studies that say that when that happens to you as a child or a young adult, your mind kind of stays in that mm. mindset as you grow. So you kind of get stuck in that, like, 13 12 10 year old mind i think that happened to uh, justin bieber really you think so there's like, this whole thing with puff daddy that's going on with like, oh p diddy p diddy with like sex trafficking <laughs> and all kinds of stuff like that like yeah like him bringing on i don't know there's a couple of videos where i think bieber uh, justin bieber came out and said there was like some dark times and some stuff that he's coming out with he's like changing things because like this is how it's not how kids should be brought into it especially in the music industry mm-hmm. music industry and the movie industry is not so different it's yeah. the same creeps and predators no matter where you go yeah um and he was a child he was a child he was very young star and he just boom all over the place and then now it's something different you can see in his face mm-hmm. you can tell in his in his in his performance his interviews that he's seen some stuff and been through some stuff so yeah yeah he's another one that i think like you said something 
something happened because like his fear of like the paparazzi is unmatched. Like, have you seen the one video of all three of the Spider-Mans going through the airport and uh, like Tom Holland is like waving and smiling and having a good time because paparazzi was very different then than when um, what was the first Spider-Man's oh, name? The Tobey actor McGuire. Toby McGuire's like hiding and scared and like shell shocked. Yeah. And yeah. they're they're all standing next to each other going through security. And it's amazing to see how paparazzi has changed throughout the years mm-hmm. where Toby's hiding and scared and like like he's traumatized and. You know, Tom Holland's like, hey, guys, how's it going? Well, so it, I think it shows how the, the change, the dynamic has changed between celebrity <laughs> and Tom paparazzi. Holland didn't see Princess Diana die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so different. So I, I feel like there's there's been some change in paparazzi and, and that sort of atmosphere. But also it's it's like, it's terrifying to see the celebrities of like our childhood or even before us just really crumble yeah. and fall apart. And it makes you wonder like, what happened? The paparazzi back there were brutal. Yeah. They were so brutal. They were just in front of your car, just trying to get that picture. Ugh, yeah. I w- They'll be I w- mean. They'll say anything to get the shot. Yeah. So, like, that's the thing. It's like, I, when you only care about money, like, you'll say literally anything to get whatever the thing it is that you need to get the money. And it's, mm-hmm. yeah. I would be a horrible celebrity because I would punch people out and run them over. <laughs> Oh, I know you would. <laughs> That's why when I pop off, you're my security. Let's go. Oh, I, got, I got your back one hundred percent. Anybody, because you'll smile around. through it. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you like a knuckle sandwich? <laughs> yeah, let me talk to you in the back real quick. Over here in the corner. You want an exclusive picture of that? Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Let me show you a secret. <laughs> also, I wanted to point out, um, Trisha Paytas is another like really big podcast. Like I personally look up to her podcast a lot. She interviewed the Zoe One Hundred One star Alexa. Nicholas and um she was like the best friend of Zoe on the show and she also was bullied on the set not only by Dan Schneider but also by Jamie Lynn Spears Mm. and she iconically remembers being yelled at by Britney Spears herself on that set so if you're looking for more material for more actual facts and someone who actually was on one of the sets I highly recommend watching the Just Trish podcast on that episode it was very good not not good good but you know it was very yeah. enlightening yeah. yes <laughs> um also uh i didn't know that they're doing a follow-up on the uh quite on set it's coming out sunday april 7th mm-hmm. which is this weekend and it's what what's today Friday the, the it's the fifth, fifth? today yeah yeah so we're yeah. filming this on the fifth which means like we might have to do a follow up right after you. this yeah there'll be a new episode so yeah I don't Bring know it back. I think there's gonna be new people in there so yeah really? I'm not sure um but I, yeah I'm very excited to to watch the new episode yeah just to kind of I don't know put a button on it or just keep encouraging people to come forward because like they said in the documentary people were scared they were going to lose their jobs like the two writers were threatened by Dan that they would never write again and being women writers in the 90s was rare so I totally get why these victims wouldn't come forward because your your job your livelihood your everything's on the line yeah but that's why I hope that yeah this documentary is seen by a lot of people and it seems like it has been really popular so I hope that this like kind of moves the boulder on Dan Schneider and like if he even if he is able to continue well hopefully he isn't able to continue hopefully enough yeah. people are able to come forward that like he a stop is put to this because it's nuts the real question is though is what i mean yeah sure people cannot hire him and not buy his work like that's one thing that's an easy thing that companies should be doing especially now that his name is literally everywhere tied to this documentary but like is there a way that he can go to jail like right. what what is something Who that they put can him prove? away yeah right, and... so that way he does time or has some repercussion for his actions because <laughs> just because he can't get hired anywhere doesn't mean because he could write under a false name He's True. still yeah. connected, I'm sure, with other people. Because he was paying kids on set for photos of their feet yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, obviously, he was so well connected. He still probably has a lot of those connections. He even said in that, like, interview that, like, oh, there's there's tons of people that won't work with me. But there's still some that will. And it's like, he could still be writing and using a fake name. And he could be paying other people to be on set directing and doing things. So what... How do you put someone who's done a lot, but just not enough illegally to put him behind bars? Like, how do we, what do we do with this? What do we do? Yeah. How do we? Yeah, that is the question. 
Because, yeah, like, obviously no one in their right mind should want to work with him. But that one guy wanted to T-bone, whatever his name is, that actor, reached out to him in the first 10 seconds of this interview with Dan after everything came out. said, I watched the, the documentary quite on set, and I just instantly wanted to reach out to you, Dan. You want to reach out to like the that's predator? Your first instinct. That's wild. What <laughs> is wrong with you? When, I just. When did Dan um, start working at Nick? Well, by my calculations, actually, I don't have that date, but <laughs> uh, I, I watched his documentary that I thought yeah. was that one, but it was about the orange logo or something like that. It was about the the upcomings of the foot. Well, no, it was about <laughs> <laughs> about how Nickelodeon started. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and it was and it was created. Mm-hmm. And ran by a woman. Mm. And there was a point that she stepped down because she said it's not the same anymore. It's become something. It's because she said it comes something bigger for me to hand, than I can handle. And she stepped down. And, I, and like the way she said it, I was like, eh, I, I get that. She's been doing it since day one. She made it. She went from a little tiny little like couple of episodes to this big thing. They had a universal lot and all this stuff like that. And. Then she was like, yeah, it's time for me to go. And I was like mm-hmm. trying to figure it out. I'm like, when did he come in? I and maybe that's why she quit. Yeah, when was the Amanda show? Dan Schneider first hired. So the last ones on that documentary was uh, the last shows that they created. Cause they're talking about Rugrats. They're talking about everything else. And then talk about Clarissa explains all, casting her, how she was just kind of perfect for the character. And then Pete and Pete. 1993 is when uh, Dan Schneider was hired as a showrunner, I think. Damn. Uh, Production Brother Network hired Schneider to work on a new sketch comedy show. Because uh, he first started working on All That was the first mm. yeah. thing he wrote. So I wonder if she stepped away. I'd be curious to look up the timeline between mm-hmm. the originator of Nickelodeon mm-hmm. and when Dan got brought on. Because she, did a, she started in the 80s. Okay. Like yeah. Early, so that would like, make like sense. Mid-80s. And then it, it just, I remember all, I remember they were talking about all that and then um, the guys from Good Burger. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. He was in Good Burger. Good, good Burger? Good Burger. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to Good Burger. Ah, Home of the Good Burger. He was in Good Burger. I think he was the owner of the restaurant is what I heard. Makes sense. Or so he was like, he wrote himself as a character in Good Burger. That kid, that kid that plays, well, not the one with the hair, the one with the voice, but the other one that's on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. He looks like he's seen Can? some shit. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, he's traumatized. No. He doesn't look like... He looks like kind of guy that's like, I'm on TV, so I'm trying to be funny. But you see me in real life, I just want to be quiet to myself. That's, the, that's what he looks like. That's what he seems like to me, the vibe he gives off. Yeah. So, wow. Yeah, hmm. it's crazy. Yeah, this was definitely a big Delulu for me, too. Because it's it's crazy, like, looking back. Because like, as a kid watching it, I didn't feel like there was anything weird or wrong with it. But I, I do remember hearing that... Dan, like, there were whispers of him being troublesome, like, not when I was a kid, but, like, probably when I was, like, young 20s, because I remember people were taking all the end credits where they would put, like, the most inappropriate phrases from the episode uh, at the end credit, Mm -hmm. and I remember people being like, what is this? Like, why? Like, it would be phrases completely out of context that they would write in the show that would, like, kind of make sense but without context, were extremely dirty for uh, kids to be hearing. Wow. Um, like, one of them was like, can I hold it? Or one of them was like, I don't want to be blackballed. Um, the Ariana Grande one was in there. The give up the juice from the potato. There was a, yeah. Okay, that's creepy. A lot of inappropriate things. So, yeah. Where do we go from here? How do we get Dan behind bars? You know? Like, how do we... What do we do? What What do we do? Step get a hold of his laptop. <laughs> yeah. Get his laptop. Oh and just God. see... FBI. Yeah. There's, I mean, I'm sure there's incriminating Oh, my God. Yeah. I just, like... Ugh. Ugh. I hope more keeps coming out, or at least enough comes out that the victims can, one, feel a sense of relief... But also, hopefully we can get some other, well, not get other victims to come forward, but maybe this can inspire others to come forward and there be enough to put him behind bars. Because if if what the false Amanda Bynes Twitter at the time is true, that she had essentially abortions or, you know, allegedly, that's that's incriminating. That's, yeah, no, that's, that's a bombshell. To yeah. Put yeah, him away. Yeah. 
Well, let's look at the facts here. First of all, Amanda Bynes is a person that do not know who this is, but what you guys are saying, she's kind of like comatose. She's like, eh, and she's doing something different. But she was lively and poppy back then, and yep. that Twitter back then came out, but now it's gone, allegedly. So, A, <laughs> she got hush money. You think so? And threatened. Yeah. That's, that's the only possible explanation for her to act that way, from, from switching that crazy, unless there's drugs involved. Does she look druggy? Yeah, uh, yeah. Allegedly, like, I mean, for entertainment I mean, purposes only. Allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> continue, continue. So these are our thoughts. Maybe not facts. Maybe it's also that too, pumping her full of stuff. Because you can also eject somebody. Yeah. Which I've seen this happen. I've I've heard this happen. I've seen it happen once, but I've heard it happen plenty of times mm-hmm. where you get somebody in like a at a bar and you slip them one of those things. Yeah. To make them all loose and whatever like that, and then you wake up and you have like a fucking hole in your vein because they pumped you full of uh, heroin or something like that and then once you once that's in that's like it's like i heard it's the worst mm. you can't shake it there's a there's like a five percent success rate of cold turkeying it <sighs> so it's like that could happen like they could control her that way coma toaster brainwashing Turn i don't know up. man because that just sounds really fishy yeah yeah no just he just if you just see one video clip, you're like something's something's gone wrong. Mm. Yeah, and I'm not laughing. I'm I really don't want to laugh at her. Like something clearly very horrible has happened, and We're I, not, I yeah. I'm laughing because I'm like I really don't I don't know what happened, and I don't know how to help anyone. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting though because like Amanda, I mean I don't know her financial situation, but don't you think like. <sighs> I don't know. I, I have a hard time wrapping my brain around the fact that the hush money is stopping people from coming forward. Because I guess Jeanette McCurdy, she was a lead in two of the shows. And if she was given 300000 you have to imagine that the leads in the other shows were probably offered more money. But now a lot of them have done other things or have jobs or have lives. And it's like, God, I don't know. What if that's part of the know. hush money? You get hush money plus... That guy's connection in the industry. Right, right. right. Because it sounds like he could probably ruin somebody. Yeah. Like, people were like that back then anyways. Like, Weinstein was like that. He's like, yeah, you don't go by this, you'll never work in this town again. Right. So You're right. Man. Ooh. On a happier <laughs> note. Love me. Uh, where can everybody find you, Chompy? Tell us a little bit more about your happiness. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm OMG Chomp on everything. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm posting about my little computer adventures, my uh, my vintage tech adventure adventures. Um, I'm making little floppy disk. Oh, I'm putting. Cool. <laughs> I got a floppy disk drive that does it does connect to a current computer. I can put, I think, one point three kilobytes on it. Yeah, very okay. tiny picture. So okay, I'm putting cool. a little pixelated picture of my butt to hand out on floppy yes! disks. Yes. Oh my god, that's <laughs> At great. the event. Oh, um, I that. also have a VHS camera, so I'm playing with VHS all the time. I collect oh. VHS. Um, so yeah, I'm having a little a cyberpunk adventure. Yeah, over on you're, my page. you're like vintage girly pop vibes. Yeah. There's another girl who also like I don't I can't think of what her TikTok name is, but she has like the key, the wall of keyboards with little bows on them. She's always like making like awesome outfits. Also, so yeah. If I when I find her name, I'll put it in the. I'll put that in there. <laughs> like I'll so, add some work for myself. Yeah. <laughs> I'll go find it. That's awesome. But yes, yeah, very inspiring. Yeah. Well, thank you for bringing up this topic because, like, I know it was on my mind, but I also didn't feel like I had enough to talk about, which I proved myself wrong. Yeah, with all you my research. notebook. Yeah. But um, thank you so much for bringing this up and and wanting to do an episode and and everyone getting to know you. Like that's. It's a scary thing to be a face on social media. So thank you for wanting to do that. Yeah, no, everyone has been so nice, so complimentary. So thank you, everyone, for liking the show and, yeah, yeah. being awesome. Ooh, and I always forget to ask this, but I'm going to remember. Which of the Delulu characters do you feel like? Oh, Are you the uh, bear? Wait, show them to me again. Uh-oh, I don't have a sticker. Cosmo, do you got a sticker? No. Oh! Uh, I think I'm it's the purple one. The bear? <laughs> the bear yeah, the yeah. I'm the, like, yeah, I'm the purple one. Rowing the boat. <laughs> I do like being the bear because the yeah. bear is just kind of like, oh, look oh, at the drama going yeah. by. <laughs> there Whereas goes. like the cat's angrily or the cat's like freaking out and then the dog's mad about it. So, yeah. yeah. No, sometimes you just have to let it flow by. Sometimes there's just so much. 
swayed as it goes. There's so there's so much that people are posting about yeah quite on set that I'm like I I can't engage with this. Yeah, <laughs> we're just gonna yeah. just take it in. Close. <laughs> yeah. Okay, scroll. That's nice that you think that. I, I, yeah. This... What character are you feeling like? I'm feeling like the, uh, the dog that's pissed Angry, off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the world and people, you know? There's some people that are like, I'm not saying any names, so I don't want to make this all political, but there's some people that has like <laughs> millions of convictions and whatnot. Nothing! You stay still able to go and get a Starbucks. Yeah. So it just, it's kind of sucks Ooh. how the system works, you know? Truly. And it's like, how much evidence do you need? How many victims and bodies do you need before you actually start doing the crap? So, yeah, truly. And that's, that's, that pisses me off. I wish I had the license to do things to people. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, you, you are guilty. We have our next James Bond right oh my here. God. <laughs> I, I have a gavel. I think we should, oh my gosh, we should make you like a judge. Yeah. A and lo- we'll bring you our like, am I the asshole? Am I the point. asshole? No, Cosmo needs to be above the law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The license to bitch slap people. There you go. There you go. 007 status. Yeah. Yes. I, I feel I like, like I after Sunday, after the update comes out, like we should do like another powwow and do this. Again. Yes. Yeah. Like I would love do to. A, a re, maybe do like a mini episode yeah. just to be like our thoughts on this since we've yes. opened up the, the Pandora's box of this. Mm-hmm. But until then, be sure to subscribe. Hit that bell notification. I hope we're on Apple Podcasts at this point. I might have not fixed that yet. <laughs> um, but be sure to subscribe. Leave us uh, good reviews because it helps new podcasts. And uh, tell your friends. And spread the word on this, uh, not just the podcast, but on Quiet On Set. Because the more we talk about it, the more ways we're going to find solutions. And not have these situations occur to kids, people, anyone. So be loud and proud. Strong and wrong. Not wrong in this case, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Subscribe, Some stay positive. <laughs> Have a hug. Bye. Oh, that's me hugging them. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>